Welcome to On The Move with Nan and Cam. And this has got to be one of our biggest guests ever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know John Lugbill, our executive <laughs> director. As you might have seen uh, on Friday, we announced that he is retiring and leaving sports backers in June 2025. So not not anytime soon. we got a little bit of time left. Too quick. Um, but obviously, a lot of people, you're a staple, been here 31 years, one of you're the founding, founding fathers of sports backers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was big news. So just tell us a little bit about what in, when, went into your decision to retire next June. Well, first of all, I feel a little funny because I got the bike on my shirt. And oh, man, I didn't even notice. Me, so yeah, yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> blending in. It's like my camouflage. You can't it's even green see screen. Yeah, just your head. Yeah, good. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I, I still have a lot of gas in the tank. Um, I still have a lot of energy. I can still do a lot of things, but I, I want to be able to retire while I still have. Yeah, of um, course. And whether it's just personal things, I still, I guess you'd call them hobbies. It's weird to call hobbies like hiking and running and, and, and paddling and climbing, but I still do all four of those sports regularly and and it's fun for me. Like, I yeah. really enjoy it. And so, yeah, those hobbies. And then I throw in hiking. Hiking doesn't norm, no, normally like during the day, we like take the dog for a walk. But when Jill and I were on vacation this summer, we hiked every day for three or four miles, uh, you know, sometimes longer, but, but that it was really fun. And, yeah. and so I think having more time for that will be really, um, great. And then if I do anything else professionally, we'll see, but, but I still have a lot of gas in the tank. I'm still going to sprint to the finish line, <laughs> drop in a bunch of sports. And Love and that. Uh, <laughs> right till two and 30. And, and we got a lot of things still to do here at sports backers and, and it's so much fun. And we get to work at a place where we're leading programs and events that for a lot of other people are the best things they remember about the past year. Yeah. And, right. and taking part in our stuff is what they look forward to every week. You know, people in marathon training team all the time say, oh, I'm just looking forward to Saturday, Sunday morning for the long runs and, and like the camaraderie. And, and so we get to live that. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's fun to come to work here at Sports no, definitely is. I feel like multiple times Cameron and I talk about, especially being more on a creative team, it sometimes feels even more fun in my opinion, because I love being yeah. creative, but like there'll be multiple times when I'm working on something and I'm just like, this is my job. Yeah. Yeah. My job. <laughs> even this podcast sometimes. This, this yeah. is my job. Hanging out with Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like that you said though, that you want to make sure that you have time, time to still do what you like to do. Because a lot of people don't like Yeah. That. They literally work right up until they die and it's like you didn't depressing. get to enjoy and it, it's depressing yeah. you don't get yeah. to enjoy the things that you like to do so it is nice that you're taking time to be like i'm gonna go live the rest of my life and have fun and still do sports back as events yeah you yeah. get to do events now yeah 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 that's <laughs> maybe know, one of the more exciting aspects <laughs> yeah and i guess as executive director i've maybe been able to do a few more than other people um but but yeah it's it, it, never done the you cross monument avenue 10k except during covid you know, never did the, the Alliance Richmond Marathon except during COVID. So, like, to do the yeah. real deal, I mean, it's it, we all know it's just so much different when everybody's out and, and screaming and all the, the cheering and all the spectators and the energy that that brings and then the community atmosphere that that brings. It just puts a, a smile on your face when you take part. So, yeah, I haven't been able to see, uh, experience that as a participant. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, we can have you be our secret spy, really give us your full review yeah. after events. Yeah. Now we got somebody on the inside who will tell us straight yeah. what it was like. How was packet pickup? <laughs> what did you think about it? Yeah. Um, so I got to be careful on that. So when I used to compete um, in whitewater paddling, I used to, I, I learned that uh, often you're really critical of yourself when you've lost, but you tend not to be as critical when you win. So I learned to be more self uh, introspective even when I'd win yeah. because there's things to learn um, there's things that you do wrong even when you win um, yeah. and so uh, here at sports backers at first <laughs> I used to do that all the time we'd come back we'd have a great event and I'd come in Monday morning with my list of things to change <laughs> and, and it was kind of like I had to learn to like everybody else needed a little more time than me <laughs> <You know? laughs> like they, were, they were proud of what we'd just You're done like, and needed a little more time to digest and We've come up with a system now where the review meetings are scheduled weeks out from the actual right. event and have it all scheduled out. And so that that happens. It just doesn't happen right away. Yeah. Yeah. That's always <laughs> helpful when, it, when stuff doesn't go as planned. So you get time to calm down, time yeah. to uh, 
not be not so hot. Too rowdy in the meeting. <laughs> yeah. Um. So tell us a little more about what went into like, or like, how did you know it was the right time to retire? I know you said that like you still wanted to be able to do things, but as far as like sports backers wise, like, how did you know that it was the right time? Yeah, it's it's hard when you're a founder. Like, mm-hmm. You know, I've worked really hard over 31 years to right. push and drive and, and keep sports backers uh, moving forward and growing and changing and, and being a positive force in the community. And there's a certain element that uh, the sports backers need to be in the right place for me to step aside. And then I need to be in the right place right. Uh, to step aside. And so that's come together. And so the sports backers is doing incredibly well. Our marathon is doing incredibly well. Um, that's one of our big financial indicators. Uh, the Ucross Monument Avenue 10K is coming back. We have great early entry numbers for next year. Um, we're going to be moving into the new office. Uh, our future office is going to be great. It's going to be right on the Fall Line Trail. Uh, we have over 20 miles of the Fall Line Trail. Um, we'll be under construction within the next year. Eight until the falling trail's done would be another 10 years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you're but, like, All right. but to have it on the, the path to yeah. get done, like, it's, huge. Like it's, it's happening. Yeah. And so all those things kind of led to this is the right time. And then just to kind of sweeten the pot a little bit, my daughter Kelly's pregnant. And so we're going to have a grandchild in February. So that's also, you know, weighs into it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, life goes on. Um, life will go on here at Sports Backers, and and uh, you know, but it's been just an incredible run. There um, yeah. you go. Yeah. 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 Just wait to drop an incredible run over all the years, and and you know, we we just get to have so much fun with what we do here at Sports Backers, and and be impactful. And I remember very early on, Bobby Ucrop. We, we were talking about what we were doing and, you know, we'd talk about the economic benefits of filling hotel rooms and, and he goes, you know, that's not why I really want sports backers to succeed. I, I want my, my children and my grandchildren and their friends and our neighbors and our associates and, and their families to have a better place to live. Right. And, and keeping that in the forefront, and I know you've all heard me yeah. say that before, but, but we're here to make this be a better place. Um, for all our friends and families and neighbors to live. And so I think we've been doing that. And I've been, you know, it's just wonderful to have that be part of my career right. uh, for 31 years. And it's so interesting to like look at it in a different way. Cause like obviously I'm not 31 years old. So I don't know what it looks like back then. <laughs> yeah. Way to rub like, it in. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that like running has become a part of Richmond because of sports backers. And so like 30 years ago, you wouldn't see as many runners or whoever mm-hmm. out and about as you do now. You can't go anywhere in Richmond without seeing somebody run by. And so it's like, it was, it was probably a lot different back then. Or just to see the outside impact, even outside our organization, what our organization has inspired or been a part of, right. and to see how much that's changed Richmond. And now to see, like you're saying, I feel like even outside of just running, like people are so active. Yeah. Um, and that's especially like a, there's been a surge of like younger people, I feel like in the last two years and the data has shown that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been great. Well, you've obviously had a lot of meaningful relationships with people in the community too over 31 years and Richmond is a big little city. So yeah. how did it feel after you announced this week to have so many nice like text and well wishes? I was looking at some of the comments after camera people posts on John. social. Yeah. People love John. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, this is how you know, like you can look at the comments and you're like, okay. You can see the impact you've made just by mm-hmm. how many people are responding so well to like, yeah, you're announcing it. Yeah, it's it, it's really <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's it's really flattering. Um, definitely boosts your ego a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I think my ego's always been a little healthy, so you know, there's, there's a <laughs> little point. Your ego, uh, yeah. but but you know, it's it's such a team effort here, and it's always been such a team effort, and not just the staff. I mean, that becomes obvious, but. But the way we work with our board of directors, I mean, I was, I was thinking the other day when George Allen was governor, when he uh, ended his term, he came on our board of directors and was on our board until he was the U.S. senator. It's like, who gets to have that in the yeah. first five years of their career? Like, that was me. You right. Know? You know, the fact that we've had such a powerful board, that our volunteer force is amazing. Yeah. I mean, so many people. I mean, man, you had... Volunteers show up at your wedding. Yeah. So, you know, like it's, it's yeah. just yeah. awesome. Fat and, and joy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's, it, 
it is like a whole, you know, partnering with all these different entities. Like it is a team uh, thing. So yeah, I get a lot of credit for that. And, and I guess there's an element that maybe I did have the openness to that and didn't want to own or control everything. Um, but again, I think because we were keeping that impact of impacting people's lives front and center, it didn't matter who did it. And mm-hmm. it didn't matter who got credit. And so it's amazing what you can accomplish. And so do people attribute a lot of that to me? Yes, but it's not um, because I did all that. Obviously, this was a team effort. Um, but but I think our community has changed. And, and under sports backers leadership, it has changed. And I guess I've been the you know, leader mm-hmm. of sports sure. backers for yeah. 31 years. So, so there is credit. an element. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. I also have to say, um, you know, it's funny looking back when I was, uh, 16 years old, I had been, uh, in a position where I organized a kayak race on the Potomac river and it was on the section of the river just below great falls. So we were all there on that, that trip, um, had to get permission from the national park service to do it. It was really hard cause there's it's cliffs on each side of the river. Yeah. So it was really hard to hang the course and set it all up. And I was, I was gutsy enough as a 16 year old to produce this race. And we had people all over, you know, the East coast come and compete. And it became kind of a, a mainstay for a number of, you know, for a couple of decades. And uh, it's crazy to think I was 16. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you couldn't get a 16 year old off their phone now to do yeah. that. Yeah. And so it's <laughs> just kind of own. crazy that yeah. I kind of grew up in a, in a time and in a place and with people that that was like encouraged. Yeah. Like, and, okay, and he so, wants to do this then. Yeah. And like, yeah, you know, you got to get permission from the national or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Not intimidated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so there and was. And for them to get permission. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. It's a little crazy. It's a little crazy. Um, yeah, especially seeing this way we used to run around on the cliffs. It was a little hairy. Yeah, I don't want to like, like, but, but that's kind of that, that like, let's try things. Let's do yeah. something new was part of, uh, who I was even at a young age. And so I think with sports backers, that's really helped yeah. that we were able to look beyond ourselves, find new things to do, find great ideas from somewhere else, you know, around the country or around the world and implement those things. And so that's been really fun. And, and I think for Richmond, it was a really right time for that to happen. So yeah, maybe I was just the right person at the right time. In yeah. Right place. No, I also think part of like you were saying about people and volunteers, and it's not just our staff that we have this camaraderie feeling with. I feel like another thing that is fostered in our work environment too, that I think helps and is probably why so many people feel so connected to you too, is that so many people we trust and inspire our volunteers and our board and our right. president's council to like take on real tasks with us that they have ownership over, they have a say in, and then they feel so invested in this, in this community at sports backers and what we're doing, but then at what we're doing in the community at large, that I definitely think it, it lends itself to a familial feel, um, for people who even are you know, directly within the organization. So I think that's definitely been something that I feel like is rare and definitely is probably a reason people feel so connected to sports right. backers. Yeah. Especially like as a coach or something, when I know. you lead a whole team, mm-hmm. then you're like, this is my team. And now you're like, I'm connected with sports backers. I like doing this because they trusted me to mm-hmm. coach this whole team. And then, yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And some of the people that reached out to me, I mean, Lynn Anderson has been a marathon training team coach since we first started the program. And she's, you know, beloved by all the people that run with her and Michael George, Mike Levins have been with us ever since the very first year of the U cross monument Avenue 10k for that matter with us the first year we took over the, the Allianz Richmond marathon. And so like to have these long-term volunteers yeah. and people in the community, I mean, we looked it up in the database. We have 1800 people that we've trained up to be leaders that's of other right. volunteers. Yeah. And so that's like an army. And, yeah. And, yeah. Um, that's a lot of people out in the community. So, you know, whether that's a fitness warrior that's teaching the classes or, you know, kids on the move uh, coach or, you know, bike walk champion that's out organizing people to show up and turn out for bike and pedestrian infrastructure or one of our training team coaches or someone that's on one of our race committees. There, I just did my thing where I was yeah. trying to like, talk about everything <laughs> we did. Uh, you did. It, but, I think you got them yeah. all. <laughs> but, but really that, that 
like that that having that whole support network and having the staff understand that it's that whole team and mm -hmm. not just us that like come to work here every day right. that that it's how we create that and that's how you start to create a culture that goes beyond your walls that goes you know out into the community and, and can live and breathe without any one person being there um and so that's really neat to have created that over the decades is, is really awesome yeah what has it been like seeing an organization like Sports Packers change over 31 years? Because every time we talk to like Michael George or like Mike Levins, it's always like the same stuff. Like they're always like, oh, so much has changed. And I'm yeah. like, okay, well, what, is it, what has it been like for you? Yeah, it, it's, um, I mean, it, it is funny. I mean, we were talking about, you know, you were saying. You, <laughs> not even you 31 were, not years 31. old, 26. <laughs> well, neither, neither is my daughter Stephanie. So, right. so like you know, my kids grew Your up. Kids. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. daughter doesn't know me working anywhere else. Mm -hmm. right. In fact, my daughter Kelly, well, she's a little older, but not old enough to remember me not working here. Right. So, so like, you know, that that's it's kind of like very much a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. right. And you know, there's there's part of me that worries about that as a founder. You kind of worry that oh my god, you know, how how am I going to feel after this is over? Like your identity, unlike. It's unlike, a yeah, and unlike a lot of people, I've had that identity as a world champion canoeist and was on the national team for 17 years. And and so I had, you know, it's weird that I've retired um, yeah. from that. <laughs> You're yeah. second retiring. Yeah. And so, so like, <laughs> I kind of have experience with this. Mm -hmm. Will the identity of being executive director for sports backers for all this time, yeah, that'll stay with me. That'll yeah. be part of who I am forever. Right. And, and part of my identity will be the being a world champion, being on the U.S. national team all that time. So, yeah, that's part of who I am. And so I, I'm, I'm not too worried in that I've had this transition before and everything's yeah. fine. And, you know, the, the, the thing that's kind of wild is I do uh, have my mind kind of obsessed yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> about what I'm taking on. And, yeah. and it'll be interesting what I... I turn my mind to obsess about next. <laughs> right. We don't have any plans for that, and and we'll see what happens after June 30. But for now, I have this to obsess about yeah. until then. It yeah. might be puzzling. Like, yeah, you might. Think we we like... got plenty of people obsessed with multiple hobbies yeah. downstairs that could really just give you a wide array. <laughs> I mean, you've already if got, you got a lot of hobbies. Like hobby, you said, though, yeah, we've got That's what I need. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another <Yes>. hobby. <laughs> uh, well, on that note, what are you most looking forward to about retired life? You got a little bit of time, yeah. but yeah, what are you most looking forward to? You know, it it's the cliche to say more family time, and certainly more time. Um, with this future grandchild will be awesome. And, and we're definitely want to be really good grandparents. And that includes being really good to our daughter and son-in-law, <laughs> so that we're not like overbearing either. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, I try asking people on staff, you know, what, what uh, do your parents or in-laws do that's particularly <laughs> good and what drives yeah. you crazy? And sometimes it's a little hard in the office hearing some of the things like, oh crap, that's like, a little oh, close. Yeah, that's a little no. close. You're keeping a um, list. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, you know, I think the one thing that I am looking forward to that is work related is there's a bit of a burden uh, every year to make sure we have enough money to make payroll. And I never wanted to lay people off because we didn't have enough money. Right. Uh, if the performance wasn't there, that's another thing. Um, and during the pandemic, we had to lay people off because we didn't have the money. And that was really painful. And and I, I really don't want that to happen again and it's not going to by june 30 and that kind of burden i'm yeah. going to be really glad to not have and and uh there's been times at sports records where we we did financially struggle and that was really hard and and I, you know we're not in that position like that's what's really good right. um but it's still a thing it's, oh it's yeah like i've been there be in the back of my brain off. yeah and it's and it's always kind of there and and i think most executive directors and nonprofits have that, unless they're just like incredibly well and endowed financially. <laughs> yeah. um, but but you know, for us, we kind of you know use what we earn every year, and so you know how how we you know start the new year and start earning again, uh, nations and everything is part of that. So yeah, it, it that part I'm going to be 
it's not what I'm like looking forward to as far as like yeah. fun things to do, right. but there's certainly a, a little bit a of, uh, yeah. a, of trying to do everything with a little bit of a monkey on my back. That'll be gone. Yeah. Yes. You're excited to not have to look out for the livelihood of yeah. 2,500 yeah. friends and coworkers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not just that, but the programs and activities mm-hmm. that we do, like, like there's a whole bunch of people that, I mean, not that I wake up thinking that they're dependent on me, but like, but there is an element yeah. of decisions we make do influence a lot of people. Yeah, no, definitely. I wouldn't have thought that's an interesting answer because I not, would not have thought about that. Right. But that is definitely something that just the burden of that I would be in the same position. I would be excited to not have to yeah. think about it or not have to think about it as much. Um, all right. This is the the hardest part of the interview for some people. This is your this or that. Your this or that. Your rapid fire questions that we didn't well, give you ahead of time. Well, nothing's been hard time. so All right, far, good. So <laughs> right. This is easy. We're just I'm glad. chatting, And we right? do want to, so. we are going to have you back on um, in June before you leave because we would like to do a little bit more of a reminisce of a, of a, what Take does the back. events look like? Yeah. yeah. Things like that. Take yeah. us back to some event creation, some things like that. So we'll definitely have a fun one in June as well. You all weren't there because it was just me and the board on Friday, but I did a little bit of that during the board meeting. I, I normally not to, don't yeah. like to talk for 15 minutes. Right? Yeah. But, but, no um, one does. But, uh, Maybe us. Yeah, yeah. That, that announcement, I thought we should like take a little bit of a journey uh, through the 31 years. So yeah, I look forward to that. It'll be fun. Yeah, we'll yeah, that, that one'll be really fun. When everything is a little closer. Yeah, we'll, we can try we'll, to plan it out we'll, so we give you time to think. We'll have made a little more history by then. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. definitely. Wow. No, that'll be fun. Um, all right, so we have, the first one is, you were saying you have a lot of hobbies. And we know, also I was like, when you were talking about sports backers being your identity, I was also like, just like, phys- activity is so much of your identity too. Right. So paddling, if you have to choose one, paddling or climbing? Paddling's better when I'm trained up for paddling. Climbing's better when I'm not. Okay, <laughs> so, that makes so sense. That's, uh, yeah. But when I'm not you trained up for paddling, I can't just go out because my brain remembers to do things in certain ways that my body can't unless I'm trained up. So yeah. I need to be like in pretty good shape to enjoy paddling. Okay, so a leisure climbing. climb. Leisure yeah. climb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He I know. Loves, I told you it's he hard. He still loves paddling, though. <laughs> Don't get him wrong. He loves paddling. Yeah. Okay. This one is because, again, you've been in Richmond for so long. And, like, we even went on our staff outing to, where was it? Great Falls? Mm-hmm. Great Falls? Mm-hmm. Um, do you prefer Richmond trails or trails in the mountains? Uh, trails in the mountains. Um, and and I... I I am really proud of the trails here. Yeah, that's and what I We've said. come so far, and and having what, what did we learn when we first started going to the outdoor retailer show to get sponsors for mm-hmm. River Rock was that eighty percent of all that outdoor equipment is actually used in urban areas like this, and mm-hmm. so I think I think the idea that you know on kind of a daily basis having outdoor opportunities near where you live and work uh, is is really fun. And so I'm really proud that we've created that here. Richmond naturally had that opportunity. Right. And so with both the James River Park and Pocahontas, we have some really good things that people would travel here for. Um, but, you know, I've, I've hiked and been, uh, been on trails all over the world. Yeah, and right. This is not Zion National Park. Yeah. You know? so, <laughs> no. so this He's little like, park, you that. know, like Old Rag is, is actually really special, you know. So, so like, Yeah. You know, there's yeah. other yeah. hikes in other places, of course. Yeah. Know. But but we should be really proud. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah. You know, I get to live right next to one. and that you even to have out. trails to yeah. go to. Yeah. yeah. A lot to be said for on a, you know, evening after work, being able to drive down there and go on a five-mile run on a trail system in, in the middle of the city is awesome. Um, all right. So this one, uh, we were just getting silly downstairs, and we were thinking <laughs> about... We are moving offices. This is not necessarily for the future sports backers office, but you've now worked in an office space for many years of your life. And if you were going to have just a dream wild office, would you rather have a fancy espresso machine that just does anything you want or a nugget ice maker? Maker. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We thought that's what you might say. Yeah. Yeah. That's when been I, talked about big time. When yeah. I don't drink coffee. Um, oh, really? Are you, do, you, do you tea? Is that what? I do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. You see me with a cup that yeah. just has a nice like thing to get cold filtered water and I can get nice ice anytime I want. Right. Like, 
why yeah. can't our office have that? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. for me, it's like, machine. why can't we just hook up our refrigerator to the water? Like, what? Yeah. why is this yeah. going to be that hard? So hopefully that's part of the I think, yeah, ice stuff. could definitely be a yeah. future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you always, this is just an aside now, did you always drink tea or was that a Jill introduced thing since mm. she, she's got English family? Yeah. You know, I think I think being I raised my kids while we were doing yeah, like, yeah. doing all this work. And and uh, I used to have to exercise and be home before the girls got up to get ready to go to school. So I always helped get them ready yeah. for school and made their lunches and got them out the door. Jill would wake up there in the middle of all that. Um, so I had to exercise really early. So often, you know, back in the day, I used to meet this group at the Tucko Y at 5.15 in the morning. And I used to run over there. <laughs> so, so I was Ooh, even up oh, earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so so I would have to be home by six thirty, and I was training for marathons and doing long runs. Um, but that's when I could exercise, and so I just wasn't sleeping. And so I <laughs> yeah, got in I mean, the habit of having like diet cokes all the time, and that's, that's not really good for you. Yeah. And so I switched to tea, and I just never liked the taste of coffee. So there, that might I feel like I've never seen you drink a soda, no. and so yeah. thinking about you having yeah. diet cokes all the time is wild right. to me. I'm surprised that you had a hard time sleeping because I'd be knocked yeah. out. <laughs> If I was doing all of that before I even went to work, and yeah. then I had to go to work, You'd be knocked and, out at three. I know. Yeah. every day. I'm turned into a really bad long sleeper. It happened post pandemic, uh, but now it's terrible. And I used to wake up and work out before work, and I don't anymore. And my husband does. He's up at like five fifteen. Alarm went off three times in a row at five thirty today, and I eventually sat up and said, "Are you going to get up?" Because yeah. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, fortunately for me, there's things that are just part of your habit right yeah and, and the power of habit that book is great and it kind of reinforced so for decades my alarm went off i got up and i did my activity yeah <laughs> like there is no hidden snooze there's no not getting up Love that for there's you. no and so for decades i did that so now i just do it and and so like there is no if if i don't feel well then i don't set the alarm but there is no day when the alarm goes off and I don't get up and get off. That's so, amazing. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Now I have an extra question. When you retire, <laughs> are you still going to be setting an alarm? Or are you just waking up when you wake up? So my alarm nowadays is not uh, electronic. Mm. It's very furry. So <laughs> okay. Sally jumps on her bed at 630 <laughs> and just puts her paw right into my ribs. <laughs> get up. <laughs> and if I'm not up, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's not. She's not taking uh, sleeping in. So, you got to get the memo yeah. before mm -hmm. before you retire. Like, hey, yeah, you got to start yeah. training her. We need to start sure. calming down. I, I get to sleep in now. Jill keeps saying, you know, when you're not here, she doesn't do that. And it's like, well, great. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> she, she does, does it when I'm here. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> she She's when waking I'm here. you up. She knows you have, yeah. you have things yeah. to do. Sally and I have a little uh, golden retriever. Um, and Sally's a little rougher with me than with Jill. So, like, <laughs> yeah, of course, because I'm rougher with her. So, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. That's great. So yeah. yes, you will be getting up. Okay. With your alarm. Yeah. Yeah. We were on vacation and Sally, Sally went with us and she's like, Hello, I have time. That's Hello. so funny. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's demanding. I don't get the paw for my dog, but I get the, the, you know, someone's staring at you feeling and yeah. you wake up and they're at the edge of the bed, just like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do a check-in then, not just in June for Revenus, but maybe six months post-retirement and see if you've just gone, fallen off the wagon, sleep until 10, yeah. being yeah. wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was yeah. great. And we can't great. wait to check in again in June. And he's we, still here. Yeah, he's still here. You'll still see him around at all the events and so make sure to stop in, wish him well. And uh, we can't wait for everything that Sports Backers has in the future, including the new office and all the great stuff ahead. Well, thank you. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. See you all next week.